In today's tutorial, let's go over the rainbow with this dishcloth, but you don't have to make it a rainbow. You can make it any colors that you wish. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial we are going to work on over the rainbow dishcloth just like so. If you don't like rainbow you can choose any other colors with this. I'm going to show you the tips and secrets to be able to make something like this. Here's my example here. I didn't go over the rainbow. I did something completely different and it is the exact same pattern but it's a matter of just changing the yarns to match your personal needs. I wanna show you some tips on this. This pattern actually threw me for a loop during this prototype. Um, I wasted a lot of time on trying to understand a particular part in this pattern and I will get to that when we get there in the tutorial. So in today's pattern what we're going to be doing is that we're gonna be going around starting from the center and working our way outward. Do you notice that you do not see any green here on the edge here? That's really important here because what you're physically looking at here, do you see that there is a pink here and then white but this is white coming down across into the pink. So then you have green and pink and then you have the pink coming down across to the white. So you can see here that whatever color every other line is it will come down and cross over just like this right down. So where you're going to get screwed up if any place is right in this corner piece right here where you're coming down because the way that I read it and because I'm very literal I read it wrong and I'm gonna show you where I made my mistake here so that you can get this done a lot quicker than what I did when the first time I ever looked at this pattern. So here's the pattern just like so a lot of words I'm gonna be breaking it down into human language and showing you as we go. So you grab a crochet hook and some yarn and follow along. Now you're gonna need some lily sugar and cream yarn. So lily sugar and cream for those that are unfamiliar is a cotton yarn. These are perfect for the kitchen because it is cotton. Now if you're Canadian you will know this as Bernat Handy Crafter. So if you're in the United States you'll know it as sugar uh, in cream just like this. So you just have to look for the cotton yarns in order to work with this. This kind of stuff because it is cotton you can use for dishcloths, tea towels, um, hot pads, anything involving the kitchen. So without further ado let's grab your five millimeter size H crochet hook today. Let's, I'm gonna be using sugar and cream yarn today and let's get started. So I'm gonna start off with the slip knot and we're gonna go and we're gonna do a chaining of six to create a center ring. So now that it's on the hook remember it never counts as one. So you got one, two, three, four, five and six and it's a generous interior circle just like this. Insert your hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through and through. Okay so you pull through two of the loops and then you'll have the center ring and what I want you to do the straggler here just wrap it around the ring as if it's part of the ring so when you're going to crochet in the next round that it gets stuck underneath and you'll never see the starting string. So for those that are familiar with granny squares you know that we usually have everything in groups of three when you go to start. So you have three on one side, three next, three next and three next. This one's slightly different so just watch out for that one on this particular pattern. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and then we're gonna put three more double crochets into the same ring. Okay so let's do this. So one, two and three. Okay, so now that this is one side now it actually has four not three like it typically is in a granny square. So now you're gonna have chaining of three, one, two and three. This is your corner and you're gonna come back into the interior of the ring again for another four times for double crochets. So one, two, three and four and then coming back uh, sorry turning the corner again. So chaining of three, one, two, three and then coming back in to the corner or to the center ring for another four. So one, two, three and four. And so you can see that we have uh, three sides done. One, two and three. We still have another side to do. So chain three to turn the corner and then put in three double crochets into the center ring. And to finish off this corner you chain three. One, two, three and just join it to the top of the beginning chain three that you started with just like this. Let me show you how to fasten off because you're gonna wanna fasten off at this point to change colors. 
So to fasten off what I want you to do is that I want you to cut your yarn. I always say about 12 inches. It just, you're better to have more than less. So I'm just gonna yarn over and pull through. And what I want to do here because this is a dishcloth and it will be used most likely is that I would throw it on a darning needle as you go. It'll just be easier than having all these colors to deal with at the end. And what you want to do is just wanna weave it in some of the plies that you did in the corner. So come across and you wanna go back and forth three times because that'll lock it in. So just going in a different path, okay? So don't come out the same hole, don't go in the same hole you came out of. Just go back across and then just go back across one more time, a third time. And what that will do is it'll lock it permanently into position so that you'll never see it. So now you can safely trim this yarn right down to the project. This is the other string that you were wrapping around in the center ring and now you're good to go. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that each and every time we do a round. That's how you would do it and stick to it. So what you're gonna be noticing in this project is that the round we just did is like the, the pink in this example here. So the next one we're gonna do, see how the white extends all the way down to the beginning here? What we want to do is that every other row will extend. Okay, so the blue that we just did has nothing to extend to. The next one we do will extend. The green does not extend down but the pink will. So if you can just remember what every other row looks like, it's just a matter of being able to do these really quick. So let's move on to the next color. Before we move on, when you're ever working in a corner like this, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna have two double crochets here. We're gonna have a double treble coming down. So do you remember how to do a double treble? You have to wrap the hook three times to come down and then you're gonna have two uh, double crochets on the other side. So each one of the corners when you're doing the extended down, two double crochets, one double treble and two double crochets. When we go to start each one of the rounds, what we're going to be doing is starting on one side and going around. So when we come back around at the, uh, at the end, we are going to then finish it with a double treble being your final before you're finishing at the end. Hopefully that makes some sense. So let's begin. So let's start our next yarn. I'm gonna do a slip knot to make sure it's extra secure. Put it onto my hook to begin. Now you can choose any co uh, corner. It doesn't matter which one you choose. They're all equal. So I'm just gonna choose. I always like to choose a different corner than what I slip stitched on the last one because then it just makes it more equal and you don't end up with a line going down one whole si uh, side. It kind of like bounces around. So just fasten on with a slip stitch like that and then chain three which counts as a double crochet and then double crochet one more time into this same corner. So remember what I just said, the double treble that extends down is gonna be done at the end. So you're gonna work your way across. So you're gonna put one double crochet in each. Now look what I'm doing with this straggler. I'm just putting it underneath the stitches so it gets stuck underneath so I don't have to use a darning needle at the end if, if I don't want to. Okay, so I'm just gonna double crochet myself across. There is four double crochets to do. So just watch out for that. And then we're gonna come to our first corner. So remember what I said on the corners, it's gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna leave the straggler down on top so it gets stuck underneath and it's gonna be two double crochets and then we're gonna do a double treble coming all the way down into the center of the ring. So this one comes to the center of the ring because of the fact that it is the ring. So you're gonna wrap the hook three times. So one, two and three coming into the center of the ring and pop it out. So what we need to do is come down through the center and then pop out this space. So you just gotta bend it over a little bit. It just is a little bit tough to do it the first time and just pull through and then pull through two and two and two and two. Okay, so there is your double treble extending down and then you're gonna do two more double crochets in that same corner. Okay, so each corner is two double crochets, a double treble and two double crochets. So let's continue to work our way around and so I'm gonna let this straggler fall out because I've kind of buried it enough. So I'm just gonna double crochet in each one of the four stitches that are there. So one and two, three and four. And now I have a corner again. So the corners, remember, two double crochet first followed by a double treble that goes down into the center ring right down in here. So wrap the hook three times. So one, two, three, set, go into the center and pop it out through that space. Pull through, pull through two, two, 
two and two and then double crochet two more times into that same corner. So I want you to do that same idea coming all the way around and what I want you to do is meet me back here and I'll show you how to finish this revolution and we're gonna fasten off and then do another color. So I'm coming up all the way around. I got a couple more double crochets to do here on the side and then we've got the corner. Now we already started in the corner if you remember. We've got two double crochets so we're gonna do this side of the corner with two double crochets and we're gonna finish with the double treble. Okay so wrap the hook three times coming into the center of the ring out through that same space, pull through, pull through two, two, two and two and now join it to the top of the beginning chain three and fasten off your yarn. So I'm gonna leave the fastening off to you because I've already shown you how to do that but this is what it looks like at this point. So the next round is gonna be slightly different and then we're gonna return to the same idea in the round after that. So fasten off and I'll join you with the next color next. So here's where we are in the project. Now I've got to the point to the white's done and now it's the next round that threw me for a loop when I did this uh, prototype and I really struggled for like almost an hour watching America's Next Top Model. <laughs> you know with the models all queening out and me struggling with the pattern. It was not a good combination. But what I want to point out to you is, is that I got screwed up right in the corners. So I was considering here and I was doing it and what I was not considering is that it says to double crochet into the next double crochet and what it, what it's doing is it's not telling you to skip a double treble and because of that I was not considering that this is a double treble when doing the corners. So what you have to always consider when you're doing this particular pattern is that when you're going to jump over you're gonna be doing in the stitch before the double crochet uh, double treble chaining your three and then doing the stitch after so that this one remains untouched. It is stating that in the pattern but if you're like me and read patterns really literally you, it doesn't say to skip and therefore you don't think about skipping so therefore you start to screw up. So let's begin this one here and it'll make sense in just a moment. So let's begin our next color. I'm gonna go with purple this time. I'm just randomly doing it. So what I want you to do is that where you fastened off okay was the actual first double crochet. Okay so it's after the double treble. So you can fasten on there if you wish or you can fasten on to any one of the double crochets after the double treble. So let's just, I'm gonna do it over here just to prove a point. So now I'm gonna uh, just fasten on. Okay so with the slip stitch and chain three which counts as a double crochet and I'm gonna double crochet myself across until I get to the one right before the double treble which is the one that I will need to concentrate on. Okay so you can either count over, I think it says to do six double crochets over. Either way you can do that or you can just look for it visually and it will make sense as well. Okay so here we go. So this is the one right before the double treble. Okay so we, here, we have the double treble and the one right before here. So in this one here what we need to do is that we need to put in two double crochets into that same one. Then we have to chain three. One, two, three and you will see there it says double crochet, uh, two double crochets in the next double crochet and uh, two double crochets in the next double crochet but it's not telling you to go over this double uh, treble which you know for me I just, I don't know what I was thinking. So skip over the double treble which is the next one and go to the second one over which is the next double and put in two double crochets there. Sometimes I really struggle with these patterns. So you should have one skip stitch right in the middle because the next one that will come will overlap and grab onto this post here. So let's just continue to the next corner and let's show you what to do. So I'm just gonna double cro uh, crochet myself to the next corner. Okay so I'm looking for the one right before the double treble. So even if if you're off by a stitch count, if you're just looking for it visually it will still make sense. So here's the double treble, here's the stitch right before. You're gonna put in two double crochets there followed by chain three, one, two, three. Skip the double treble and just go to the other one on the other, uh, next double crochet on the other side of it for two uh, double crochets. I think I've got too many plies there I'm gonna just pull out. It's one thing I love about crochet. If you're ever screwing up just pull out. Okay so skip the double treble and go to the next double crochet for two. So one and two 
and then work your way around. So continue to do that same pattern going all the way around and just watch out for your corners and then it will completely make sense. So I'm coming up all the way back around and remember that the final corner needs to be finished. So I gotta do the two double crochets right before the double treble, chain three, one, two, and three and just join it to the top of the beginning chain three to finalize off this round. Please fasten this yarn off and then we're gonna be back and I'm gonna show you what to do in the next round. So let's just join the next color and this color is gonna be very similar to what we did with the green. Okay, the only difference this time is that we're not going into a center ring but we're actually gonna go behind this post. Okay, the double treble post. So every other round is just like you did with the purple. So you could do an entire afghan using the same pattern because it's every other row is the same. Okay, so what we can do now is that we're gonna do it just like we did with the green. So we're gonna start off right here in a double crochet, work our way around, do the double treble down and then keep working that, that and then at the end we're gonna do the double treble to finish. Let's just join it to one of the corners. It can be any corner, it doesn't matter. And we're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and you're gonna double crochet into the same uh, space. So now you're going to double crochet yourself across this same edge. Okay, so I'm, notice how I'm leaving the straggler down on top of the line so that it gets stuck underneath the stitches. Again, that's a personal preference that I like to do. Hide them as I go. Just makes it a lot easier at the end. So because the square is bigger, you'll have more double crochets to work with as you're going across. No big deal, it's getting bigger. And what are you looking for then on the other side? Well, we're looking for the space and each one of the spaces are gonna have two double crochets, one double treble and two double crochets. Okay, so here is the last one before the space. Okay. So let's review what's going on in the space. So we're gonna start off with two double crochets first and then we're gonna do a double treble around this other double treble. For the double treble what we need to do is that we need to wrap the hook three times and come in behind this same post. Okay, so just coming across and underneath, grab the yarn, pull through, pull through two, 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 and two and then come into the same space then to finish it off with two more double tra uh, double crochets. Okay, so you're playing around the post in this particular example. So now what we're going to do is that we're just going to continue to uh, double crochet ourselves across the edge and you're gonna work your way until the next uh, side and I'm gonna show you one more time on what to do. So just coming across. This is a very simple concept. Um, it's really quite easy. So you're just double crocheting across. Terminology and, and crochet can always throw us for a loop especially if we're very literal, literal. I tend to get my commas and my periods and my capitals all messed up and therefore I find it difficult to read sometimes. It's, it's not really the pattern. It's more me than anything. So there's the next space. So we're gonna have two double crochets followed by wrapping the hook tw uh, th three times for a double uh, treble that's going around this post. So wrap it three times going underneath the post only. Pull through, pull through two, two, two and two all the way back up and then double crochet two more times into the same space and then work your way around. So please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. We started off in the space but we never did everything. We only did one side of it. So to finish off the last space is two double crochets in and then a double treble around. So wrap the hook three times coming into this other double treble just behind it. It's a front post and pull through, pull through two, two, two and two all the way back up and then just join it to the beginning chain three to finish that off and then fasten that yarn off. So all you need to do on this particular dishcloth is return back to what you did with the purple. So you start off in the, the, um, the double crochet right after the double treble put in two. You're gonna double crochet yourself all the way across until the one right before the double treble and you'll put in two. You'll chain three, skip over the double treble, come into the next uh, double crochet for two. And it's just exactly what you've seen in the purple. And then the next round after that is exactly what you've just seen done right now. 
Okay, so it's just a matter of repeating this pattern over and over and over till you get to the size that you want and uh, this was a generous size and I think it uh, works out really quite neat and uh, this is a really good fa uh, pattern to play with. So this is called Over the Rainbow. It's featuring Lily Sugar and Cream Yarn. Um, you can see even the back looks pretty decent too and so whether you're choosing this as an actual dishcloth or a pot holder or anything like that. It's still really quite decorative and uh, either way it's up to you. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as YarnsBracelets.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.